Hi there, it's Phil Lindsay here with Pete Magazine. We're here at East Durham College here in College, College, that's easy for you to say, down in Peter Lee. And we're here with Warren Baster, who was about to make his debut this weekend on Saturday on the big Callum Rocky Smith. Yeah, Callum Smith Rocky Field and Bill. And uh, you were originally meant to be making your debut on the twentieth on the Phil Jeffrey show, but it's come early, that must be even better for you. Yeah, I'm a late addition, um, MGM Wabia. Um, managed to sort it out and I'm on the show now and ready to go. I'm ready to go. So, uh, the setup for yourself, obviously, you've got your, your years in the, in the GB squad, weren't you? So, bags of experience there. But moving over at the pros, fresh start, you're going to be with Macklin from a promotional point of view and you're going to be here with Dave Vince from the training, is that right? Yeah, MGM might be here. Then will be uh, me, me managerial side. And uh, I'll be based here in East Durham College with under Davy Bins as, as my coach. And will you be going out there to do any training over there or holiday in? Or? Yeah, I've been, I've been out a couple of times. I've been out a couple of times. Brilliant facilities out there. It's uh, well, everyone would like to like to train over there in the sun, and it's just a nice place to be. Um, but predominantly, on me on me training will be done here. But I will be going out there for camps as my career gets more um, serious. So having your debut on this show, I mean. Just getting your debut, we must be so excited, but I must be thinking, get the fight out of the way, get back ringside and get there as quickly as possible. And But how must it feel? I mean, if you were talking off camera before about not the fact of going stale, but sometimes when you've been training for a long time, going through the same thing again and again and again, sometimes you need a bit of a boost. And we're saying that turning pro is probably just the boost you needed. Yeah. Well, like, like I say, I've been on JB like seven years. And uh, and I come to a point where it was like I'd, I'd had enough, and um, and what more of a boost can I get than boxing on who's full and who? Yeah. I think go arena, headlined by one of my old GB mates, and uh, I'm I'm I can't be more more pleased. So you don't know who you're fighting yet. Uh, that's how these things tend to happen. You get the matchmakers, even if the was matched by now, you may get a change in the last few days anyway. So it's. Yeah. You've got to be careful not looking too far ahead and plan for certain opponents, but are you still going to be fighting on the 20th of November on the Jeffrey Short Rate medals as well? Yeah, I'm still on for that. Still on for that. Get this one out of the way and I'll be straight back in the gym for 20th. Obviously no cuts, no injuries. Yeah. Now, yeah, exactly. Follow that. The, it's your first fight. When did you... Was it February you left the GB squad? Is that right? Yeah, it was February, March time, I think it was. Back, back end of February, I think. And when did you start training for your first fight? Um, from, from your first fight? I've been, I've been... Basically, I've been in the gym all the time. I've just been waiting for the, for the nod to step it up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'm always fit. Um, but so it was like... I think I got, I got the call about three weeks ago that I'd be on this show. And from that point, I, I stepped it up and uh, uh, got some good spawn in and... and or prepared. So I guess when you're doing the, the amateur boxing and obviously three threes and I, we're talk, again we're talking off camera before with the head guards and then having to adjust to the professionals different styles things like that with the experience you've got okay it's over three threes rather than four threes but there's probably not that much change to your training until you start stepping up to six and eight rounds or have you found any changes since you moved in here with Dave? Um, not, I, I mean, I've sat down with Dave and we're doing, I'm going through my technique again and I'm de delivering my shots properly and things. But as for um, the longer rounds and stuff, when I was on GB, we always sparred a lot of rounds anyhow. We trained, we trained like professionals down there, probably better than yeah. like some professionals do, do you know what I mean? Well, a lot of and professionals have got full-time work on exactly, top of that, haven't they? Exactly, exactly. So we, like, we had the best of the best down there and, and on a... On a Tuesday or Wednesday we'll be doing eight rounds eight rounds sparring then we'll jump off do three rounds on the bags three rounds on the pad so we're all very very well conditioned so I think the transition the pros shouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem now standing just under 6'4 that's heavyweight size but you're going to be boxing a cruiserweight now you, you get the likes of I don't know David Hay was probably a similar height to cruiserweight but he really really struggled to make the weight yeah. you don't have those same problems to make the weight though do you no for some reason my weight just doesn't sh shift at all i walk around at 93 kilo and i do an extra couple of runs and i'm down 91 so it's uh I i'm fine with the weight 
fine. Yeah, well, just just be thankful. Just don't, uh, don't again. It's, it's no, keep, keep the blessings coming. And you've just turned thirty now as well, haven't you? Mm -hmm. So, how far do you see? It's a same old question at the start of somebody's career, but with, with the experience and the background you've got, you must have lofty heights when it comes to ambition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've got I've got a feeling I'll get fast tracked. Um, so, and and as for. The age, 30, I think it's, like I was saying, it's 2015 now, it's not in the 1970s, and people live completely different. I've, I live a healthy life, and uh, I live for the sport, and I don't see any problem in this boxing up there, if I want to do, for another 10 years. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I think it'll be fine. Well, if you look at Bernard Hopkins, and you look how long he went on for, and... I'm sure there's somebody else making a comeback at 51 or something. I'm not sure who it was, but uh, I'm sure I read that somewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, 10 years will be fine, I'm ah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> six, uh, six and out, I, I, would, I would hope. So you don't know who you're going to be fighting on this one, in, and you won't know who you're going to be fighting on the Rayton Meadows show yet. But for, obviously, any Sunderland fans, because uh, a lot of your boxing has been done on the road as opposed to boxing locally because yeah. you've been in the GB squad. Mm -hmm. So have you got any, I think you'd like to say to the, the local fans who can be coming out to see you at the Rayton Meadow show. Yeah, just if everyone can turn up, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a great night of boxing. It's a great bill. Jazza Dickinson and Martin Ward topping the bill, and uh, I'll be on there some time before, and uh, everyone who comes will be much appreciated. Get yourself along there. Rayton Meadows, 20th of November. Meantime, all the very best of luck for Saturday. Enjoy the ringside show afterwards, and if I don't see beforehand, I'll see the show on the 20th. You will. Great stuff.